<laughs> um, hello. Welcome back to All This Man. And we're about to do All This Man. Come on. This is Professor Parker, and we're back. We have Asada here with us. And Asada's in this video because this is something I wanted to show her. And this is something I never learned back in the day. What we're going to do is we're going to divide fractions without KCF. Now, what does KCF stand for? What's KCF stand for? Do you know? I don't remember. So KCF is a trick that we use to divide fractions. Keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. I like keep, change, flip. I like that method. I learned it many, many years ago, and it works for me. It'll work for you too, right? I have some other videos here on the channel where I demonstrate dividing fractions using keep, change, flip or the keep, change, flip method. But as I say all the time, there are always many different ways to do math problems, and we should become well-versed in as many different methods as possible. So there is actually a way where you don't have to flip anything or invert, right? That's the technical term for it, invert, right? Invert the divisor or invert the second fraction. You can just divide horizontally the same way we multiply horizontally, right, Asada? Mm, yeah. Right? So the same way we multiply horizontally, we can divide horizontally. But one of the ways that that becomes easier is if we have least common denominators for both of the fractions. So let's take a look at number one. Actually, I'm blocking the problems. Let me stand over here. Um, so if you want to dance, you can like slide over there. Um, just don't block these three problems. So anyway, all right. So Asada, do us a favor. Read number one out loud. Number one, so here. Three-fourths divided by two-thirds. Three-fourths divided by two-thirds. Now, another thing I like to do when I'm doing problems like this and I'm doing videos like this is I like to make sure that you have a conceptual understanding of what's actually happening with division. When I was much younger, I didn't have a conceptual understanding. I had an algorithmic and a procedural understanding. I knew what to do. I knew the steps, and that was it. I knew how to get to the right answer. But I didn't know why that was the right answer. I didn't know why it made sense. I didn't know none of that. I didn't care, and I wasn't taught that. So I want you to understand conceptually, Asada, and y'all viewing this, why does it why does this make sense and what's actually happening so when we're, when we're dividing fractions or when you're dividing anything you're trying to figure out the second number which is the divisor how many of these or how many of this can fit into the first number or the first fraction so look, look check this out how much of two-thirds can fit into three-fourths how much of two-thirds can fit into three-fourths so if you think about it like this right if you converted if you knew decimal equivalents and you know that two thirds is the same thing as 0.67 or like 67 cent out of a dollar and three fourths is the same thing as 75 cent out of a dollar, right? You would say, well, how much of 67 cent can fit into 75 cent? Well, Asada, 67 cent is less than 75 cent, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that the whole thing can fit in there plus a little bit more left over. There's leftover space. So that means this whole two thirds can fit into three fourths and a fraction of another two thirds can also fit into three fourths because two thirds is less than three fourths. That might be a little difficult to process, but if, after you do a bunch of problems and you think about it that way, it'll start to sink in, I promise you. All right, so three fourths divided by two thirds. Now check this out, Asada, watch this. What you wanna do is you wanna find an LCD or just a common denominator of these two fractions, Asada. I'm about to put you on the spot. What's the LCD of these two fractions? <clears throat> what does LCD stand for? Least common denominator. Correct. It stands for least common denominator. So what's the LCD out of four and three? Twelve. It's twelve. So she's right. It's twelve. So watch this. We're going to rewrite these two fractions. And our goal is to divide horizontally the same way that we multiply, right? Without doing keep, change, flip. Like I said... Keep change flip is cool. I like keep change flip, but I also like this other method as well. And we should be able to switch up and alternate our styles. So we got 12 right here. We got 12 right here. Now look, 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 look. What's my numerator gonna be? Hmm. What's my numerator gonna be? We divided by two. Nah, sis. What's, what's my numerator gonna be? If, that, if the four turned into a 12, what's the three gonna turn into? Four turned into a 12. What's the, the 12 is the nine. nine, right. And then if three turned into a 12, what's the two going to turn into? An eight. All right. So now, now watch this, right? The answer is going to be nine eighths, right? The denominators don't even matter, right? 
But let me show you why, though. Let me show you why. Don't just take my word for it, right? If I divide horizontally, then I might have what's called a complex fraction. You know what a complex fraction is? Mm -hmm. What is it? Right. You fraud, you capping. You don't know what a complex fraction is. A complex fraction is when you have a fraction inside of a fraction, right? So look, 9 divided by 8. Watch this, watch this. You got 9 eighths. And then what's 12 divided by 12? Well, just we're just going to write it. 12 over 12, right? All right, watch this, watch this, watch this. What's 12 divided by 12? 1. So look, this becomes 9 eighths over 1. <laughs> so what, what happens when you divide anything by 1? It becomes self. It becomes itself, right? Like she said, it becomes itself. Just like when you multiply anything by 1, it becomes itself. So if I divide 9 eighths by 1, I'm just going to have 9 eighths. And that's my final answer. 9 eighths. But look, look what I could have did from the rip. From the rip, I could have just did 9 divided by 8 and just been done. But I just did all this just to show you, like, step by step, like, why it actually is 9 eighths. Now, check this out. Watch watch what else I do. Watch this, right? So in case you sit there watching this and you like you like me, like, you, maybe you never learned this method before. You're like, yo, I don't believe you. Professor Parker, you tripping. I think you lying to us. You fraud. In case you think that and you like keep change flip, like I said, I like keep change flip too, right? But I could do it using keep change flip, and I promise you we're going to get the same answer. So watch this. So if I do keep change flip, I keep the three-fourths, I change the division sign into a multiplication sign, and I flip the two-thirds, that becomes three-halves. And now it's a multiplication problem now, right? Because that's how we do it. We keep change flip. We change into a multiplication problem. So look, look, look. What's three times three? Nine. So that's nine. What's four times two? Eight. See? We got the same answer. So do So doing keep change flip, we got nine eighths. Or just dividing straight across with LCDs, we got nine eighths. All right? So either way, we're going to get nine eighths. All right? So this is just another method just to add into your arsenal so that you'll know how to uh, divide fractions. All right? And sometimes it's like easy. You, you might recognize something in the problem. And, you know, it might be easier to just divide straight across with LCDs. All right, let's do number two. Asada, what's the LCD of 6 and 10? 60. That ain't the LCD. That's a common denominator. See what she did? She gave me a common denominator. So we could use that, but that's not the LCD. But you know what? No, nah, no, nah, we're going to rock with that. We're going to rock with that. We're going to do 60. We're going to use 60. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. We can still use it. You always get a common denominator by just multiplying the denominators together. You can always get a common denominator. Sometimes the, that, common denominator will, could that common denominator will be the LCD. Sometimes it won't. In this particular situation... This common denominator of 60 is not the lowest common denominator because like she just said, you realize what's the LCD? Ain't nobody put no marker on you. Anyway, what'd you say? It's 30. She so realizes it's 30, right? So, but we can still use 60, but watch what happens though. So if six turned into 60, what does the five turn into? What? Five. If the six turned into 60, what does the five turn into? Uh, 50. 50, right, because six times 10 is 60, five times 10 is 50. If 10 turns into 60, what does the 9 turn into? 54. Right, because 9 times 6, 10 times 6 is 60, 9 times 6 is 54. All right, so look, 6 divided by 60 is 1. So those basically cancel out. So then we got 50 over 54. And in case you're wondering why I was able to do that, remember what I did. If you come in, if you just came into the video late, just run it back, rewind it, and look what I did up here, which will explain why this is just 50 over 54. All right. Now, 50 over 54 can be reduced. Now, this is why you also want to choose least common denominator, so you don't have as much reducing to do, and sometimes you won't have any reducing to do. Uh, what's the common factor between 50 and 54? It's Six, right? It's two, but six is bigger. We want a bigger common factor. So, no, six is not a common factor of 50. Um, 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 You know what? I'm about to just divide this by two. So look, because uh, they're both even numbers. What's 50 divided by two, Asada? What's 50 25. divided by two? 25. 
And what's 54 divided by 2? You don't know that one, do you? Thank you. It's 27. Here's a trick. I don't know if you use this trick, but if 50 divided by 2 is 25, this is like partial quotients method. You could break 54 down into 50 and 4. 50 and 4. 50 and 4. You already know what half of 50 is. That's 25. What's half of 4? 2. Add the 25 with the 2 to get 27. Works every time, I guarantee you. See? Math, got, math has a lot of rules, and that's what frustrates a lot of people. You got to learn the rules. Once you learn the rules, you won't be frustrated. But at the same time, while math has a whole lot of rules, math got a whole lot of cheat codes. Like I said, when I was a youngin', I liked math. One of the reasons I liked math was because it reminded me of playing video games. Just like in video games, when you learn the rules, you're going to win. You know, it's going to be enjoyable. It's going to be fun. I learned the rules in math, and I learned a lot of the cheat codes so I could get to the answers even quicker. And me and my, my homeboys in class would be racing and trying to see who would be the first one to get to the right answer. And I just kept learning. I kept learning as I progressed. I would keep learning and keep learning cheat codes. So I never lost my appreciation for the for the subject. All right, so 25 over 27. That's um this the final answer, right? Miss. Huh? This is the final answer, right? Yeah. Because we can't reduce this. These two numbers, their only common factor is a one. So once you get to the point where in your fraction, your numerator and denominator only have a common denominator or well, a factor of one, a common factor of one, that means you're done. So 25 or 27. All right, last one. Yo, 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 last one. Let's run through this. What's the common factor of 7 and 5? Uh -oh. <laughs> I mean, not common factor. What's the common denominator of 7 and 5? <laughs> Multiply them together. Oh, I thought all that it would be another answer. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's 35. Yeah, 35. And this, so this is an example of when you multiply the denominators together, that is going to be the LCD. It's a common denominator that happens to be the LCD, the least common denominator. So you got 35 divided by 35. Now, look, 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 look. Yo, what does this 2 turn into? 14. Yeah, that's right. You tripping. Come on, 14. Seven times 10. What does this 4 turn into? Uh, 28. What? 28. 28, because 4 times 7? That's 28. Because 5 times 7 gives, you, gives us 35, so what we do below is what we do above. As it is below, so it is above, right? If 5 times 7 is 35, then we also got to do 4 times 7, all right? Yo, back up. You're blocking the work. The people are trying to see the no, work. No, I'm not. Back up. So we got 28. Again, cancel out the denominators. And then we got 10 over 28. All right, yo. Reduce this. Huh? Reduce this. 10 over 28. Reduce that. 10 over 28. What's the common factor oh. of 10 and 28? They're both even numbers. So they're both divisible by 2, right? Sure. Yeah. Then divide by 2, each of them. Divide each by 2. What's 10 divided by 2? 14. What's 10 divided by 2? Oh, 5 and 14. 14th. That's the final answer. All right? So look what we did. I just introduced you, right, to another method of dividing fractions, right? Most teachers, most schools, I shouldn't say most because I haven't done the research to confirm that, but many, many teachers and many schools only teach keep change flip. And like I said, keep change flip is cool. I like it. That's what I grew up on. I grew up on keep change flip, right? Keep change flip is my jam. I like it. But it's very important to know more than one method to do a problem. So it's important to know how to also divide in other ways. And you can divide straight across the same way we multiply straight across. But you need to have a, well, you don't need to, but it's more efficient if you have a common denominator when you do that. Because when you got a common denominator, right? When you got a common denominator, you only need to worry about the numerators and they become your answer. All right, so nine divided by eight gives us nine eighths. 50 divided by 54 gives us 50 50 fourths and then we reduce if we need to. 10 divided by 28 gives us 10 28 Then we reduce if we need to. And we all done.
All right. So I see you got a lot of energy. Somebody, we got to get you to dance practice. Yo, where you going? You want to close out the video? Anything you want to say? Bye. This one over here. All right. Yeah. So anyway, um, go get some practice. She too hype. So go get some practice. Make up some division problems like this if you need to, or go online and find a. You drawing now? So go or go online and find a worksheet, right? Um, so you can get some practice. Also, shout out to the ancestor W E B Du Bois. I forgot to talk talk about him in the beginning of the video. I was so a little too excited to get into the math, but um, definitely shout out to this ancestor historian, sociologist, teacher, scholar, writer um, from Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Did undergrad at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee, Pan-Africanist, wrote several books, spent time in Philly, spent time all over the place, you know, um, edited the Crisis Magazine under the NAACP, um, did a lot for our people. And his work is definitely more than more relevant than ever today. So definitely check out the work and the writings, actually read him for yourself, study him and analyze his work for yourself. You know, um, the world in Africa, souls of black folk, dusk of dawn. Um, the Negro, um, what else? The Philadelphia Negro, um, Black Reconstruction. I mean, his catalog is deep. His catalog is deep. So definitely check out the work of W.E.B. Du Bois. This is a picture from when he was an old head. Um, but yeah, all right. So Sada, are we out? Sure. All right, see y'all on the next video. Peace. Wait. <laughs> okay, bye. I'm leaving, bye.